Hey guys, how's your day going? Uh, there's a little bit of rain delay on the Daytona 500, so I thought I'd uh, get out in the garage, take advantage of the time, and uh, start working on that transmission a little bit more. Get into uh, just the uh, the differential end of it, where the ring gear goes, the planetary gears are, and uh, let's see how far we can get on uh, disassembly and putting the new ring gear on. So, let's get started. Okay, after you've taken out all the bolts off of your uh, ring gear, then get a good solid surface underneath it. This is just balanced here. I've got a uh, SAE bolt that is smaller than the, the diameter of the bolt I took out. I'm just going to set it in there and I'm going to have to uh, smack that ring gear loose. You'll see it's starting to separate right in here. It's a You got to heat that up when you're uh, putting the new gear on. I'm just Probably wouldn't want to do that either, but as I said earlier, that's why we're taking pains. That's why we're doing this with a junker first, so we develop the feel for what's really going to happen. And I'm real kind of excited to take a closer look at this and take some measurements and compare it because there is a magic sleeve that is inside here that is what gives you your backlash. Um, they come in a a few different sizes and I'm hoping when I go from the uh, I believe this will be a 33 we can count this out and uh, man I love this old German stuff and uh, here you'll see the you'll see the original uh, scribe marks that gives you uh, critical information on your ring and pinion and I'm looking for that right there <laughs> this is what I don't see and I don't know if you can if I can get the light right here <sighs> that little VW right there that's what I do not see on my newly purchased 437 setup, which I wish it was. Not a lot I can do about it. So, who knows? Hopefully it's a good one. Guess we'll find out, huh? Okay, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we got some uh, aluminum protectors in this vise. We're going to clamp the housing in and we are going to remove this pin. It has been uh, staked on the other side and uh, we'll have to It's a tapered pin. Don't lose it. Okay. Nice. That holds your shaft in place. Set that aside where you won't lose it. And then you want to probably drive your punch, your pin out.
pretty obvious where that came out because you've got your hole so kind of put your pin in the way it came out all right now we got it on its side laid on its side that be my screwdriver just patted in my hand Bingo. Goodies. More goodies. This is the sleeve that I was after more than anything. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, that feels nice. That is a nice fit. Oh, baby. Those are good looking spider gears. This spacer comes in different lengths. Hope you got a nice view of the back of my head there. We're looking, uh, we're looking at the the wear pattern here on the ring gear. You got the coast side and you got the drive side. Of course, this one had water sitting in it, so it's a little bit rusty. But uh, when you uh, have too tight of a clearance, you will have a tendency to get more wear and more galling than if you have a little bit more space for uh, the junk to squeeze through, so to speak. And uh, yeah. Should have been a washer on the end of that. Boy, this part of it all looks really good. Definitely, definitely reusable. That could be cleaned up. These spider gears too, you want to hang on to them. And then this is your your long axle side. Looks like we didn't get any water in there either. Nice. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so this is your carrier. This comes off like so. That internal part is a really <laughs> nice bearing surface. And so is this. And then you've got, this is what you'd call a side gear. And then you've got your your planetary gear and your spacer sleeve. Okay, we, before we move on to something else, there's something I wanted to show you here. And uh, <clears throat> notice these windows that are there for your oil <clears throat> to get into that center cluster. Notice how they're kind of like scoops. See how they're raised? They're at an angle, slow on the right, high on the left, right here in the square. Does that on both sides. That <clears throat> forces oil into the housing <clears throat> and then it can come out through these windows on the other side. Pretty cool. On the super diff, what I did was angle this hole made a large hole there to draw oil in <clears throat> and a small hole there to let it out okay as long as we got things laying out side by side this is the set from the 437 ring and pinion this is from the 412 I believe I have a 412 or higher 
actually, um, we, let's see, I think I have 412 or higher in the car right now. This is 412, which is known as probably one of their strongest. Both the 437 and the 412 use an 8 tooth pinion gear. This 412 is 33 tooth. This one is 35 tooth. So to go from ratio 412 down to 437, you're adding two more teeth. And <clears throat> you can see, if you look at the angle and the thickness, they're making up the difference. There's a reduction in strength by me going with this one. That's okay. It's worth it. I want the gear ratio. <clears throat> I'm not planning on launching this thing on pavement, even though it might get pounded on some off-road stuff. Bad. That got trashed because um, it had a really nice wear pattern. Here's uh, here's those two teeth there. Look how nice that is. That's a nice pattern. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get get the other side of it too. Yeah, those are nice. That was a nice transmission bummer. There's that VW sign. The good stuff. The good stuff. The old gold. I looked all over this one and I couldn't find any of those kinds of markings on it. Um, not a VW marking. It has the, the angle markings on there for your pitch. And that's how, when you're, uh, they machine them and, and line them up in pairs. So you want to make sure that you got the 412. If you had a bunch of new ones laying there and they were marked different, you'd, you'd match the 412 and the 412. And then the same thing here. Um, this one says 40. 2051. I'll I'll give you the scoop on the number sequence what that means, and uh, but I gotta I gotta look at it from the from the book. Oh look at this! This is your uh, something else I missed here. Your thrust washer. Yeah, you never really are gonna have two forever hard pieces together. There it is. Just like you got three shims on your flywheel for your crankshaft end play, you got shims all over the place. Uh, and that's just so that these can spin. And this is what wears, uh, not really wear. Hmm, well, how do I want to put that? You need play, you need space. You need space for the oil and for expansion when it gets hot. Um, it's a lot easier for those shims to move around than it is to uh, have the two uh, solid pieces. You don't want two hard surfaces. You never want two hard surfaces in contact with each other. You always got to have something soft in between or as a buffer. Uh, something to absorb the shock and, and allow some wear. Um, we'll go into that more later. But... Uh, yeah, that's cool. All right. Well, it looks like the project's coming to a screeching halt here. We've got uh, we've got the new 437 set up. There's the ring gear off of that. Here is the uh, stock 412. This 33 tooth, this 35 tooth would go from 412 to 437 on my gear ratio. Not a lot of help, but I thought it might work out and uh, when I went to mount it up here on the carrier uh, I discovered that uh, the bolts were not only a different length but a different size and they're not going to work with this carrier so wished I'd have checked that a long time ago but uh, I didn't and I have to sit down and decide what my options are going to be now uh, there's a possibility I could uh, use this as a template and 
drill I have a drill press so if this isn't hardened and tempered I could drill in between these holes for the larger bolt and coarser thread size I do have that tap so that's an option uh, definitely I don't know if I got many more unless I wanted to put a spacer in there because this fits good and this one is way too sloppy a fit you know even if <laughs> you put all the Loctite and stuff you want on it maybe I could pin it in a couple places to keep it from shifting but that ain't that ain't a good idea I think the only option I'm gonna have is is uh, redrilling and tapping that but you know it's just a piece of scrap the way it is so oh shot through the heart and you're to blame you give ring gears a oh, bad name bad name almost as bad as my singing huh <laughs> well hope your day went better than mine looks like the Daytona 500 was kind of a bummer too so uh, maybe I just should have stayed in bed <laughs> so anyhow Take care. Thanks for watching, subbing, commenting, and uh, keep watching. Easy Jeezy out.